Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Neri here from Drakewing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale Races Path. So, although, yeah, the last place we left off was, uh, we had just walked into the bar with Bulgare, talking about our lady issues and how we're in love. And, well, let's get right it back into it, shall we? I wonder how much more of Races Path we have, because she hasn't even gotten full grown yet. I'm really looking forward to that. Want me that... Want me that big, titty... Nessie girlfriend? I don't know. I'm being weird. <laughs> anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. I'm going to take you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it. Alright, let's do it. <clears throat> oh, God. Let me get that voice right. Malcolm. Well, there's enough hate and doubt. Whenever we find love, it's a true miracle. So she kicks you to the curb. She spits in your face. Tells you you're a scallywag. I don't, th I don't think she'd do that. You've got yourself a keeper, a gem. I think I might. Can't she cook? She likes fish. We'll get her steps back. He puts his chin in his hand. What about a stew or like a mutton? I don't think she knows how. A baker? No, not at all. Is she hefty? I can't tell if he's teasing me or trying to do who the woman is. No, well, <clears throat> a bit. Not in a bad way. She's voluptuous. We'll get nods and approval. Nice! Because you lug barrels, push a plow, stack rocks. Actually, I imagine so. Well, now we're talking. She sounds like a prize he like a prize heifer. Oh no, she's a whole other breed. Aren't they all? <laughs> oh man. Well, Garen looks off wistfully, and I'm tempted to ask what's on his mind. And women, obviously. You look like you're speaking from experience. Oh, this isn't about me, lad. I think you're on the right track. Now finish your beer and go get him. Well, Garen may not have the right answer, but you won't find it in your pint. Yeah, Bulgare is awesome. With a wink, Bulgare picks up a tray full of empty bottles and glasses and retires to the back room. I do as I'm told, but I nursed this last drink, taking my time to mull over my feelings and his over-enthusiastic advice. Is there really any way I could be falling in love? If I strip away the spectacle of her transformation, the urgency of our intimate rendezvous and the focus on the woman I've only just started to get to know, do I really love Grace McLeod? Is this what love feels like? The pain of parting, of wanting to be with someone all the time, the precious time we spend together bring, bringing me more joy than I've ever felt. And the pain of knowing you can't be all that person needs. Yeah, that's love. Another feeling interrupts my thoughts. I sense, sense a pair of eyes on me. Who may that be? Is that the... The monkey man? <laughs> no, oh, it's her, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Huh, <laughs> it is I who should be apologizing. I didn't even notice you come in. The alcohol has loosened my tongue. Effie's face drops, and I regret my choice of words. Oh, but you did seem lost in thought. I felt lost quite a lot these past few days. Me too. We share a wan smile, and I pull out a chair next to me. Care to join me? A pint of ale might not help us find our way, but it'll help us forget where we're headed. <laughs> She's cute. I wonder if you can get with her. Very interested in that medallion. She breaks into a melodic laugh, that's not one I enjoy hearing. But instead of sitting beside me, she goes over to the piano, fingering its ivory keys silently. No, I'm not here for a drink. I just came to the stack of Nanny to check in on things. <laughs> I take my glass and walk over to her to the empty establishment. Well, as you can see, it is thriving. So it would seem. Those McLeod girls really know how to captivate an audience, eh? Jesse could certainly put on a show. I didn't realize you knew the other sisters, though. Oh, only in passing. They... Seem like good people. I nod silently, not wanting to venture down that rabbit hole. A stillness returns to the pub, save for the sound of clinking glass coming from the back room. Hmm. What is your story? Do you ever wonder what it might have been? Effie's voice jolts me out of my thoughts. How do you mean? Like, what if that starlet here had stayed? I try to picture the pub filled once again with the flapper and her admirers. I wonder where I would be in that crowd, if at all. It's difficult to imagine.
Less difficult to imagine are the alternate endings to the several close calls I had in No Man's Land. I dare not linger on those. I suppose I don't give much thoughts, much thought to what ifs. I take what's given to me and move on. Effie's eyes fall to the piano and she speaks softly. Which for you no go past you? Hearing those words from my dream once again sends a shiver down my spine. Uh, pardon? That's what my parents would say when I was very young, I think. It was a long time ago. I wish I could better heed their words. Best not to dwell on that which has already transpired, if you can help it. If only I could take my own advice. Sometimes I can't help it, though. <laughs> Nor can I. Just thinking on it, several memories come to mind. Come to mind unbidden. Ones that I'd rather forget. They sympathize with the poor girl. Is that what has you feeling lost? She looks at me, mortified. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to trouble you with my own problems. Think, think nothing of it. It is a pub, if not a place to commiserate. And Mulgair makes a great counselor, too. At least he thinks he does. Effie gives me a knowing wink, and her expression softens. What about you? <clears throat> mm, wow, wow, okay. <clears throat> Your voice is so deep all of a sudden. What about you, Malcolm? What has you feeling lost? The question catches me off guard. I sense, she sh I sense she means the best, but I hesitate to respond because, truthfully, I'm already mentally ascending a mountain of advice from Mulgair. In the middle of sorting out all my future is all, but you didn't want me to subject me to your. But you didn't. But you didn't want me to. Blah. But you didn't want to subject me to your problem, so I won't subject you to mine. Of course, as you wish. She seems to be debating whether or not to continue. Just about what we were talking about earlier, about what ifs. Her face becomes quite earnest. If there's anything I've learned, Malcolm, it's this. Don't let an opportunity pass you by. The perfect day never comes. You have to make every day the best it can be. At first, I take her words at face value. Wise words, yes, but still spoken by someone who doesn't know what I'm going through. But then I realize, perhaps it's more than a platitude. Perhaps I've been approaching the question all wrong. Am I in love with Grace? What if that doesn't matter right now? Why dwell on the here and now, when our future together could be so bright? Or so terrifying? I can't know what the future will hold. Maybe it's out of my hands anyway. All at once, things become very muddy again. Perhaps it's time to change the subject. Good advice. You know Bulgar must be looking for a new starlet. There's an opportunity if I ever saw one. What do you mean? I mean, you should audition. Audition? Me? Of course. Seems like you're confident enough to take on any job. Plus, you've got a cheerful personality and a smile that'll win over any crowd. Effie's cheeks are suddenly red as poppy flowers. A woman like you can go places. Can you sing? Dance? I... I... I don't think... I mean... I should... Uh, I've got to go. She darts out of the pub before I can even say goodbye. Was it something I said? Ah, <laughs> oh, what an interesting girl. God, I hope we get to know more about her. I'm kind of... Oh. Oh, hello there. That's one unexpected surprise after another. There's someone I never expected to see at the Stag and Nanny. Marion! What are you doing here? Is everything alright? My first thought is that something must be wrong at the lock, but on a closer look, her concern seems to be directed at me. Who are you talking to? Her tone is abrupt. Um, well, am I being accused of something? For a brief chat with Effie? No one, really. No one, huh? You sounded very happy to see whoever this no one is, Malcolm. Is it anyone Grace knows? I decide to change. I decide to say change the subject. It might be more effective than a defense. No, just an old friend. What brings you to the pub? Can I get you a drink? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Malcolm, 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 Malcolm is launching that alpha strike. Apparently, now it's Marion's turn to go on the defensive. No, I just came here to meet someone. Ah. Okay, she's meeting the fishmonger. All right. Exactly that moment, a man strikes through the door and walks right up to us. <laughs> Ahoy, Malcolm! Nice to see you on this fine day! The fishmonger. Malcolm, you remember Douglas? Douglas Cranach? He takes my hand and gives it a firm shake. Oh, a pleasure to meet you, De Dougald. The fishmonger guffaws and Marion goes white. Goodness no, Malcolm! That was Douglas, uncle! God rest his soul, this is, Mur this is Murdoch's boy! The gears in my head churn. Douglas, 
Oh goodness, you look like... I may have three beers in me, but I know well enough to stop short of saying an old mariner. You've changed. Gone is the bright-faced lad I've known in school. He only has a few years on me, but he's the spitting image of his father. Hey, a stint in the Navy will have that effect on people. For once, I'm glad I joined the Army instead. I look at Marion, who is turning beet red. Here's her eyes firmly attached to Kranach, who looks over to her and gives a wink. I'd love to catch up, old friend. I promised Miss Marion a drink. Unless you've time to stay and chat. No, Malcolm was just telling me he was headed down to the lock. It was. There's so much to process, but I play along. Hey, yes. Perhaps another time. Please excuse me, I should be on my way. A stormy aspect sweeps over on Douglas's hidden features. If you be heading to the lock, best be on your toes, lad. A foul beast scores the waves these days. May and I exchange urgent looks. Sounds like the stuff of pure fantasy to me. You may find it hard to believe, but as a man of the sea, mark my word, it is true. The blasted imp even stole my boat just yesterday. Eh? Your rowboat? I don't know what a creature of the sea need with a boat. Are you sure someone from town didn't just borrow it? I hope Grace appreciates what I do for her, even if I suspect she doesn't. I know not. I feel it in my bones, Malcolm, and I swear upon me uncle's grave I will catch the beast. Ian speaks up to change the subject. If it weren't for your missing boat, we'd have not gotten to know each other after the, qu after the quilting club at the quilting club yesterday. Isn't that right, Douglas? This keeps getting more interesting all the time. <laughs> really now, you quilt? Nay, but they had me all at the heart. But no, but they had me all hard at the current cordial so you can uh, you can drink. And the rest of the town as well. There he is, soul set foot in here for their daily liquor ration yesterday. Well, Gary hurries out from the back room and begins setting a table. But I'll let you two make it up. But I'll let you two make it up to me about buying me a type shelf liquors today. Come on, you lovebirds, sit and be merry. They're both Marion and Douglas are blushing. The fishmonger taps his hat. Malcolm. Mouth hangs open as I watch the two walk to the corner booth, hand in hand. A moment passes and Marion turns to run back to me, leaving Douglas sitting alone. Malcolm! She stops and looks around us and lowers her voice. I spoke with Grace. I'm trying to figure out... I'm trying to figure things out with her. I'm trying to push away my fears. The fishmonger. She suddenly points back at Douglas, who peruses Bulgar's drink menu. It's all for my sister. Well, mostly. He offered me any leftover catch. I smile, knowing a half-truth when I hear one. I seriously can't refrain from giving her my own inquisition. I hate to meddle, but <laughs> you and Douglas. You really are your grandma are your grandmother's grandson, aren't you? She rolls her eyes, but seems very eager to talk about her new friend. Well, Grace told me just to put myself first, to do something I would never normally do. And you did. It's hard not to hide my surprise. I simply offered Douglas a taste of my homemade cheese. That would be hard to resist. Marion scuffles her feet a bit and looks to the ground. Grace has been very assertive lately, telling me my business. Somehow I've been listening, and honestly, I have nothing to lose. She looks as if she wants to say more than that, but changes the tone of her voice to one less somber and more hopeful. Grace also spoke about you, but how much she cares for you. Really? I'm even more surprised. She has only good things to say about you. You see, when I thought you were speaking with another woman, my protective instinct kicked in and... I'll just say that Grace has made me believe that finding a partner isn't just about companionship. It's about having happiness. It's something I honestly don't believe she's had before. Have you? I... oh my, I hope that wasn't too bold. It is. No, I haven't. She looks toward Douglas, and I can tell she wants to return to his side. At least, not yet. Go on, Marion. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you for a lot of things. Aww. That, look at that. Marion's got herself a very fuzzy boyfriend. Good lord, how does that man see? Outside, I take a huge inhale, absorbing the sense of old hay, damp air, and something burning in Bulgare's kitchen. The sense of home. Mmm. God. Honestly, I wish I lived in a place like this. I really do. Fresh air and ale do wonders for the mind. There's a lightness to my step as I make my way back to Hazel. Still, I walk cautiously along my route, imagining who I might run into next. Hmm. Sorry, Miss Hazel. That took a wee bit longer than I expected. She looks at me skeptically, as if wondering how I'd forgotten her. Oh, I can never forget about you, lass. I just got in a little over my head. Indeed, my visit to the Stag and Nanny left me with lots more than I'd bargained for. 
New questions, a few surprises, plenty of advice. Any of it helpful? I laugh, wondering if I'm not bright, if I'm not right back where I've started. At least my headache is gone, and my path is clear. Let's get you back to the stable. Have a date with a certain foul beast. I'm surprised she didn't fucking headbutt you when you said that. <laughs> Alright, I wonder how this is gonna go. The lock looms below me. Somewhere down there is Grace. I know I need to apologize to sort things out between us, but I still don't know what I ought to say. It doesn't matter, I tell myself. I swear you'll get no pass to you. Just say something, anything. But I know I owe her more than that. I need to set things straight between us, for both of our sakes. Logar's words resonate. Love will either last forever or be fleeting and memorable. What difference should it make if I just blindly dive in deep with Grace? So what if it doesn't work out or we both get hard feelings? Hasn't that already happened? All's fair in love and war, right? Let out a sigh, knowing that just isn't true. Nothing is fair in war, and God only knows what's fair when it comes to love. I'm not sure if I want to find out. Does Grace even love me? There's no way she could be using me, could she? Who well, wise up, Malcolm. Of course she could. You're giving her more than a good time or two. You're fulfilling her wildest dreams. No matter how forthright she is, she's getting something out of this relationship that you can't comprehend. A him and haw, trying to find a reason not to believe that. But I do comprehend. It's indescribable, intangible, and beautiful. It's everything Bulgare described. The way his eyes lightly lit up about his former flame. If you can't trust Bulgare, who can you trust? It's the look of joy and anticipation on Marion's face as she walked with Douglas. It's the impatience I felt speaking with Effie when I would rather be with Grace. It's the pit in my stomach urging me to return to the water to mend our wounds. I've never questioned beauty beyond the physical. Wondered what I find attractive. I know what I'm told, what I see. Sink or swim. I suppose this is a, this is, this is a pivotal one. Of course I should have known what was happening. I've been falling head over heels this whole time. I just took some help to see, just took some help to see it. I know now who I want to be with, all the time on land or at sea. The person who keeps me sane, who holds me and nourishes an empty part I never imagined needing filling or could be filled. I know now what I like, what I want. It's not just Grace's body, it's all of her. Every quirk, nuance of her different smiles, her mind, her heart, hell, even her devilish tongue. The longer I think on it, the more I have to accept that the burning in my chest, the pit in my stomach when I'm not around her, the longing I've never had. I'm in love with Grace McLeod. Fins and all. I'll do whatever it takes to make her see that. Oof. Man. Oh, this better not be the end. This better not be the end, I swear to God. Okay. It's getting fucking good. It better not just cut to black. An autosave has been created. <laughs> ah, okay. Alrighty. She's not here. From end to end, I've combed the beach. Scanned the waters, the cliffs, the rocks. The only sign of Grace are the fish skeletons she's nibbled on instead of swallowing whole. Grace? Oh, where is she? Grace! Nothing. Marion would have said if something of Grace were at home, wouldn't she? Or perhaps she is hunting. One look at the fish pieces scattered across the beach is enough to remind me of her appetite. Should I wait for her to surface? I could be, I could be here all night. I sit on the beach and listen to the waves. Trying to calm my mind, trying to suppress the doubt nagging at the back of my head. I'm worried that she's gone, and that I'm the one who sent her packing. I laugh aloud to try to change my mood. Fifteen minutes of waiting at tops, and I've already jumped to the most dire conclusion. <laughs> Ooh. But as the minutes drag on into hours, my heart sinks with the setting sun. Come now, Malcolm, be reasonable. It's a lock, it's a big lock. She could be anywhere along it, or atop it, or beneath it. This beach isn't her only haunt, but if she's in her special place, or perhaps the place where this all began. Her grace first stole my heart. The grotto. I stand up again and begin disrobing to my knickers. Perhaps my nerves have, got, have gotten the better of me, or call it a hunch. I don't want to wait around any longer. I don't want to come back tomorrow. I don't want to leave Grace how I left her for any longer. I just want to find her and set things right. Yeah, I'm betting this is the part where he, where he definitely, where, where she makes her bigger changes known, and I think it might freak him out, because she's big. As I hit the water again, the sudden shock of cold shoots through my body. I patiently wait to adjust to feel warmth flow back through me. 
but the warmth doesn't come. My vision is dark, my body is numb, and my muscles refuse to give to move at my command. Even my breath is frozen in my lungs. Was carelessness or ego? Was a carelessness or ego that made me think I could swim these waters without grace? I realize my mistake too late as my body begins to slip beneath the surface, pulled out toward the center of the lock. Uh oh. Uh oh. Time seems to slow down. An eternity passes before something grabs me at the waist. The firm grass fills me with heat and hope. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's a big girl. Big girlfriend. Giant girlfriend. <laughs> Ooh, beautiful. Next thing I know, I'm gasping for air. My eyes blink open to find myself bathed in golden light. A cough and sputter. Is this heaven? And I'm going to pause it right there, guys. So we're going to see next episode just how different Grace is. I bet she has definitely changed. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell on Calmer Seas. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!